Hello, today I'm going to talk about a true classic game from 1974 from SBI, Star Force Alpha Centauri Interstellar Conflict in the 25th Century. It's a you know, true sci-fi game. It's actually based on you know science fiction, not so much fantasy, but actual you know kind of fiction. Um, so it uh, comes in a nice story. It actually it's got a couple pages here, kind of laying out the story. But a uh, synopsis of it is that. The main technological advance which makes the whole game future possible is a means of shifting. Shifting relies upon a combination of human telekinetic and telekinetic abilities with sophisticated intelligent machines to temporarily join two widely separate points in time in order that a ship may shift instantly from one point to the other. In this manner all relativistic time-space problems are really sidestepped and communication between star systems light years apart are made feasible. So it's a basic strategic game and then an advanced game that has uh, detailed tactics as well. And it's a flat tray box, meaning that they did a few of these and actually um, this is related to Outreach and also Star Soldier. And there's one version that they all three come in a box, which is nice. Um, I have them in the individual trays. The tray, ver the flat tray version they call it is, you know, the box is the tray. So actually, the, the rules they also kind of tell you kind of what you're looking at here. So this is a teleship, and you know, going by the rules here. So. A is the primary shift ring here. This is the secondary shift ring. This is the bridge, uh, the maneuver center and crew quarters. This is the Gnostic module mapping and recovery tanks. This is the gravity sled, energy modulation, um, energy, energy modulation pack, connect drive, this is the ship systems control, life support, and recreation garden. So it's, it's awesome that it's got all that thought into it. And you know, I'm going to kind of give an overview and get a sense how to play it in an hour. So hopefully I'm able to do it some justice. Components. Talks about the box. Or the tray. Inside the tray lid, they have... You know, summary, they talk about what they call the acceptability and complexity rating and playtime. Um, so acceptability, you know, it's a, a new game. Complexity rating, they give it a 6.5. And for comparison, they have Monopoly is 2.34. So I don't know if it's necessary to two decimal points on that one. Average playing time, two hours. Which uh, I don't. It seems a little bit short compared to what I've seen, but we'll see. And it shows the components, rules. So 24 pages of rules. Uh, typical SBI is a lot of a lot of detail, a lot of subtlety, um, a lot of words, black and white. Well, it can't be an intricate game because it's got options, but it's got a good, obviously, good core to it. And it's got a, a lot of good scenarios in there as well. So we'll get into that. This is a, a tracker sheet for movement trackers. Oh, they, they call them shifts in this game. And players move simultaneously. So it's a very nice, very nice pad for tracking those. Appreciate that. Then the SPI tray comes with these covers, which is differentiates it like from Yakinto, which doesn't have covers. But, and they don't, I guess you can kind of tape them in place. Um, they don't like press fit in, but they do their function. 
pretty good mix of counters. Not a whole lot of different types, but also the unique ones. Uh, but enough to you know keep you busy with the different potentially you know several different races, um, different motion elements, etc. So nice tray. I really appreciate the trays. On the back of the tray, I would note that they got this, like, you can't flip it over because the stuff will fall out, but there's, like, a cardboard backing that, you know, it's, like, 40 years old. So, I mean, that can kind of come loose, so I just taped it on, but I like the tray itself. So here's detail on the unique components, the unique counters. Um, they're pretty simple, but they do capture the kind of neat sci-fi background. It turns out, well, so these are, these are Star Forces and these are Star Gates. And it turns out, it just so happens that the star forces can only be controlled by women because only women can be powerfully telesthetic. Um, for instance, you know, clairvoyant or mildly telekinetic. So that's uh, so they're crewed by women, and only 139 people per 19 billion can have that effect. So it's quite rare. As far as the different races, they, I mean, define races, there's the, you know, humans, and there's the La Chalda race, and the, the Rame, or Rame race, I'm not sure I pronounce that, and, um, and there's also, you know, xenophobe rules that come in here, too, um, so anyway, that's kind of neat. Uh, so, for the different races, Star Force, Stargates, and several of each of those. And then there's uh, tactical situation markers, where basically you indicate where there's tactical combat happening, and then you do the tactical display. Hold, uh, star marker, and uh, you know these are using the advanced game only. Still randomizer chits for the these are the first and uh, the first or second half of the hex coordinate, and these are the Zulu or kind of a Z coordinate. These are neutralization markers, and these are randomizer chits, which they go from zero to nine, and kind of indicating how old this game is. Apparently, ten sided dice weren't like that commonly available then. So they since they I assume since they didn't have those to use these, so they have basically four zero to nine, but I'll be supplementing that with, you know, obviously ten sided dice. And then the map or the it's a stellar display, any tactical display. Uh just search around I see this is in different versions. There's this this is a you know a card stock that you know folds out like a poster and it's I think it's well done. I think there's other color variations of this from what I can tell out there. I mean I personally like this one. It's kind of it gives a nice kind of dark background to kind of the maybe the more brighter components that stick out, so I like it. And then there's also a board mounted one that comes in that, like a bookshelf game, which I'll keep my eye out for that one as well. And then, so there's the stellar display, and this whole this whole map is it's big. It's 22 by 34 inches, and there's 74 star systems in here, and it's in three-dimensional space. It's like a, a sphere, and the so the tactical display is a when you get in like one hex of, of this. The game scale. So I talk about Zulus, which means that this is three-dimensional. It's, you know, X, Y, and, and Z. A light is basically a light year. And so light is shorthand for light year. So the stellar display is 39 lights across and 43, you know, deep. And the stellar game turn represents 12 hours of real time. And then the tactical, the mini light Zulus are each one mini light across and one mini light deep, 
where one mini light equals one third of the light day. The technical display is one hundredth of a light across by one hundredth of a light deep. So it's one section of a, a, a section of a hex. Each tech turn, technical turn represents 30 minutes of real time. And then there's various kind of player aids here. Uh, this strategic combat results table for the basic game. So when you do the advanced game, when you get in a hex here and have a combat, then you jump to the tactical display. Maximum shift table, over shift results, tech shift teleport cost table, combat cast resolution table, mode change cost, cast attenuation table, combat result summary, and this is to help translate um, true distance in three-dimensional space, kind of what we've seen in you know, games like Vector 3, for instance. Uh, technical display, combat uh, cast pattern. It's all very well done. I like you know the graphics. It kind of indicates different stars here and everything. So well done. So we'll go through the rules then. First of all, some terms. Light Zulu, the exact three-dimensional position of stellar display, and run in terms of their four-digit hex number and Zulu coordinate. There are 37,639 light Zulus on stellar display. For example, Sol is located at light Zulu 2020. Elvis Centauri is light Zulu 1821, negative four. Star system. Any one of the variously colored discs on the star display. Like each star system consists of star and its planets. Planets aren't displayed because of scale. Star systems are grouped into three classes, as distinguished by the size of their symbol. One are the three home systems of the three races. Two is the secondary systems, those being those having colonizable planets. But no Sending life forms. Three, the tertiary systems, those stars which have planets that are called terraforming before colonization. This is 500 years in the future, but they won't change significantly in position, so it's fairly accurate. Star Force, fleet of four interstellar spaceships represented by a single counter. The operational mobile unit in the game. They ship around the stellar display and engage each other in combat. Shift, the instantaneous movement of Star Force units from point to point in space. All movement in terms of shifting. Star Force is a basic shift range of five lights, which may be extended with the aid of Star Force's stargates or overshifting, which is risky. Unlike almost all games, movement is not step by step through space, but it's transferring from one point to the other. Stargate, the space station in orbit around a star, was not itself capable of shifting is capable of augmenting the shift capabilities of friendly star forces. We also participate in combat, somewhat in the manner of a fortress or strong point. Star display, we talked about the map. This local neighborhood of stars, so expanded plane extended out from the equator of the planet Earth. Star systems are located horizontally at this plane by being placed at the appropriate numbered hex. The vertical distance from it is given in terms of zoo coordinate. Hey, how many lights above and below the plane the position lights? If the map were provided an actual three dimensional substance, it would appear as a sphere composed of over 37,000 hexagonal solids. The system and plus minus numbers combined with the position of the numbers in the hexagonal grid are used to produce this three dimensionality on a two dimensional map surface. Players will note that stars are grouped by color coding to indicate where they are below, in, or above the equator by the map. True light distance is the three-dimensional straight line distance between anti points of display, Zulu coordinate or number, a number that expresses the vertical distance in lights like a Z coordinate. A given point is from the two-dimensional plane of the map. Zulu numbers are always expressed as positive or negative number, indicating whether the point is above or below the plane. To limit the highest plus or minus number allowable within that area of the map. 
Note that the map is divided into concentric rings centered around Sol. Each of these rings has a Zulu limit number printed on it. At least as much as other games, Star Force is a matter of being in the right place at the right time with a remind amount of force. There are no front lines in Star Force, no easily discernible pattern of advance and retreat. Winning strategies are based on proper deployment and outguessing. Deployment as much as possible. Sequence of play for the basic game. Game turn. It's playing game turns. The game will usually continue until one player wins a victory. All action must take place in the sequences outlined below. Game turn outline. Starship plot phase. Each player writes secretly the new light to position. Each of forces will shift in the shift execution. Save shift execution, move all star forces that are making shifts within their safe maximum. Over shift, for star forces which are conducting shifts greater than their safe maximum, see the coordinate readout segment for each number of hex in which two or more players have units. Star forces targets, they inform one another of their respective Zulu number of these forces, thus determining whether or not they occupy the same light Zulu. Players also reveal the Zulu number of any star force which is in a light Zulu adjacent to an enemy stargate. Note that there are 20 light Zulus adjacent to each target. That is, the one in the light Zulu directly above, the one in the light Zulu below, and the three, one in minus Zulu levels corresponding to the star Zulu coordinate, and the six adjacent hexes. At this point, if opposing players do not have opposing units in the same light Zulu, players proceed to the following game turn. If, however, they do have units in the same light Zulu, they then proceed to the combat execution phase. Combat execution, opposing forces in the same light Zulu, strategic combat sequence initiated. A series of strategic combat sends are played until the situation is resolved, namely until all, only one player's forces remain in the light Zulu. Note that more than one combat situation arises in a given game turn. Players pick the largest combat situation to be resolved. They then continue it until it's resolved and proceed to the next largest combat situation. Initial combat. Each player totals up the strength points of the forces in the light Zulu. Note that the entering for star forces and certain defending star forces may have different strength point values. The first combat seg segment is then executed by comparing the attacking and defending strength points allocated by each player, taking the difference and referring to the strategic combat and results table. While he dies, and the results applied. Second and subsequent combat segment. If there are still opposing forces, proceed to the second combat segment. Second and subsequent combat segment. Each player can use the strength points based on the combat. And the number of forces remain in the chain of strength for the second combat segment, plus any stargates. Play continues until a series of combat segments until one player has been removed from the contest. The our neutralization record phase, this phase is applicable in the advanced game and modified base game. All units which were neutralized in previous game turn are returned to normal use and, and strength. How to plot shifting. During the shift plot phase of each game turn, the shifting of the various stir forces is written in advance. Players then, when plotting, should take two columns of the simultaneous movement pad in order to plot a single game turn. first column should be used to plot the activity of star forces engaged in that game turn. The second column should be used to plot the plan destination light zoo of the star force. Individual star force are identified by letters which correspond to lines on the sim move pad. Shift plot code S normal shift by star force, ES enhanced shift, this represents star force Moving to Light Zulu, which has been enhanced by another friendly Star Force Stargate. GS Gate Shift, extended shift made by using testing a friendly Stargate. Since this represents a shift to the system by a friendly Stargate, which is in the beginning of Light Zulu. Enhanced Gate Shift, EGS. Extended shift by Stargate to Light Zulu, enhanced by a friendly Star Force. This represents a Stargate, testing the Star Force and moving, and another friendly Star Force, enhancing the destination Light Zulu. If this is a one way process, you may not shift or enhance Light Zulu to an assisting Stargate in the same manner. Gate to gate shift, extend shift from assisting guard Stargate to another assisting Stargate, 
enhancing. This represents that Star Force engaged in nothing other than enhancing the designation of another friendly Star Force. Note that enhancing Star Force may only be used by one given Star Force once per shift per phase. Destinations. The second box of every shifting Star Force is written in the Light Zulu, which is planned to be the ending Light Zulu for the shifting Star Force. If a given Star Force is engaged in enhancing another Star Force, then write an E in the second box. The planned ending Light Zulu should be written in pencil and or shift involved. Is involved. If to the overshift results table, a given Star Force does not complete its intended shift, the actual ending position should be written in the box or shift range coding. Whenever an overshift is plotted in a star force, for a star force, write the key letter, appropriate overshift range, calm, circle letter, if the shift code. Star shifting, if star shifting, there's no movement allowance, such as in many other SPA games, where star forces have shift ranges, which cannot be exceeded except in certain circumstances. The basic shift range of a star force is five lights, this may be increased to the assistance of friendly Stargate or the enhancing of a given shift by other friendly Star Forces. Shift procedure. A sim simultaneous movement pad is included with all. Each line represents activity of a single Star Force. During each Star Shift procedure, players use this line across Star Forces to write the plot code, i.e., type of shifting engage in, and the expected destination. So, where it starts, what they're doing, destination. Light Zulu is the second box. During the stellar point, stellar plot execution phase, players place their star forces in the newly plotted positions. If they successfully shift, in certain cases, players may attempt to shift to distance greater than allowed. It's called our shift. Uh, shift star forces. During the shift phase, all star forces may be plotted to a shift. The distance of shifts calculated in terms of lights. Okay, you can use the uh, Light distance table. Any number of enemy or friendly forces and other units may exist in the same light zoo without interfering with other for movement purposes. Star forces, which begin the shift plot phase in the same light zoo, may shift out to different light zoos or the same light zoo without any interference. Star forces, which do not begin the same light zoo, may shift into the same light zoo again without interference. Combat situation has never begun until both types of shifts that is, safe shifts and over shifts are completed, only then does the combat situation begin to be executed. Shift ranges, normally assisted safe shift range is five lights. This number is constant for all star forces and therefore not printed on playing pieces. Enhanced shift, shift ranges for star forces, 10 lights. Enhanced shift is defined as a shift to a friendly star gate or to a non-shifting friendly Star Force, which has been assigned the task of enhancing this light zoo. Star Force uses enhancements current light zoo, may not, self, may not in self shift, and may only enhance the light zoo of friendly force. Stargate has a basic capacity of assisting two Star Forces in their shifting. This capacity may be increased to four Star Forces, while the involved Star Forces are performing exactly the same shift. IL Star Forces are shifting from the same point to the same destination. Star forces shifting from an assisting stargate to an ordinary unenhanced side zoo have a shift range of 10, ten lights. Star forces shifting from an assisting stargate to a light zoo enhanced by a friendly star force has a shift range of 15 lights. Note that in this case, there st may still be some enhancing, may be one enhancing friendly star force and destination light zoo for each shifting star force. Star forces shifting from one star gate to another have a shift range of 20 lights. When using only its basic capacity of assuming assisting two star forces, star gate may perform any combination task. It may enhance the location for one in shifting star force and assist the shifting and out shifting star force, or it could assist the out shifting of two star forces to two different def destinations may not perform such mixed missions when exceeding its basic capacity. Sun range effects when shifting into Light Zulus defended by enemy stargates. Whenever a Star Force attempts to shift into Light Zulu containing active enemy stargate, you must add four lights to the calculated distance of the shift. If a Star Force were being assisted by a friendly stargate, it could be up to six lights away from an enemy stargate and still shift to it without risking overshift. 
A star force which begins the game turn adjacent to an enemy stargate. You always shift into that stargate slide Zulu without risk of overshifting. Note that this is true even if the xenophobe scenarios which reduce the normal shift range of xenophobe star forces to one light when operating in PSL space and PSL star forces to one light when operating in xenophobe space. Semi head unit display. The positions of star forces are revealed to the opposing player only to a limited extent. Upon the completion of all shifts, the only player places one star force counter in every numbered hex that contains so on the on the board that contains at least one friendly star force. The exact Zulu coordinates of the individual star forces in that numbered hex are revealed only in two cases. One in the case of friendly star forces in one of the twenty light zoos adjacent to the opposing stargate, or two when opposing star forces are in the same numbered hex. In the first case, the quantity and zero coordinates of the only those star forces actually adjacent to the opposing stargate are revealed. Second case, each player must reveal to, to the position opposition the zero coordinates only of all friendly star forces in the hex, not the number of star forces. The actual number of star forces is only revealed when opposing units are actually in the same identical as Zulu, or when star forces are adjacent to an enemy stargate. Flight Zulu of a stargate is always known by all players, exception to xenophobe scenarios. The stargates are always assigned to a given star system, and only one stargate per system is allowed. Maximum shift table. The maximum shift table details the shift ranges of star forces when performing one of five basic types of shifting. For each type of shift, there is a safe maximum within which the star force is guaranteed to arrive at its destination, and the overshift ranges which cross index in the overshift results section. Explanation of overshift results and their application. S, safe shift, complete shift as plotted. M, mirror shift, shift the star force in exactly the opposite of the three dimensional direction plotted. R, randomized in the basic game, the star force is removed from play for the remainder of the game. When two or more star forces are making exactly the same overshift from the same point of origin to the same destination, and they are making either a simple gate shift or a gate to gate shift, only one result shed is drawn, or one dice is rolled. When the shift is normal shift, enhanced shift, or an enhanced gate shift, the overshift results are determined on a star force, a star force basis, with you know one dry, die roll each. So the way the maximum shift and overshift table works then. So here is the different scenarios. A normal shift, um, hence light, gate shift, hence gate shift, gate to gate, etc. And these are the safe max. And then if it goes beyond these, then you go over here to the overshift table. For instance, if you're doing a normal shift of six, you'd go to column A, and then you'd Resolve here, you you know, the roll of dice and then see if you got shift, mirror, or randomized. And similarly, if you do an enhanced gate shift of say, you know, 17, you go here to column B and then resolve. Determining the final resolution of a mirror shifted star force. Mirror shifting results to the star force being positioned in ex exactly the opposite manner from that which was plotted, to an imaginary straight line from the center of the two-dimensional destination to the center of the two-dimensional right hex and continue backwards until this passes through the center of the two-dimensional hex exactly to the point of origin. Now reverse the Zulu change of plot to determine the final Zulu position. So this is how you do that. Whenever the results of mirror shifting or randomization in the advanced game would place a unit off the star display Adjustment is made to maintain the unit within the confines of the map. If the uncontrolled shift exceeds the Zulu limits of display, reduce the Zulu number until it is just within the maximum allowed at a particular point. If the two dimensional limits of display are exceeded, bring the star force back along the line of the mirror shift until it attains the map. Attains the map. True light distances. So, this is basically um, so you can figure out your XY hex distance and the map, but then to capture the Zulu or the Z, it's basically, you know, the math is, you know, square root of 
x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals you know, the distance. Uh, but this is basically, you're basically getting your x, y, which is on the map here, and then having your, your z, and that gives you your, your distance. If either the Zulu or the planar delta is 1 or 0, then the true distance is equal to 1 or equal to the delta greater than 0. For kind of rules of thumb to simplify that. Basic game combat, general rule. Combat occurs between opposing units who, after executing their plotted movement, are in the same like Zulu. There is no set rule for attack or defender. Rather, each of the opposing sides may be their attack or defender, or both, in a given combat segment. Procedure. For each player involved in a specific combat action, total the strength points of all his units involved in the light Zulu. This represents, for each player, a, good, a pool of strength points from which the, he may allocate his strength and his defense. From this pool, each player should simultaneously write down the number of points allocated to attack and number of points allocated to defense. Combat is executed simultaneously. That is, the effects of combat are taken into consideration after each player is attacked in turn. Either player may attack first, he states the number of strength points he is attacking, and the opposing player states the number of strength points they are defending. State the comparison as the difference between the attacking strength points and the defending strength points. Consult the basic game combat results table, draw, you know, roll dice from the, and, and read the result on the appropriate line under differential columns. The result is not applied immediately. The formerly defending player now proceeds with the attack against the formerly attacking player. Repeat the above procedure. After both players have executed their attacks, results are applied. Each combat action continues until only one player's units are left in the light Zulu. After all combat actions are resolved, proceed to the next game turn. Cases. Which units may engage in combat? During the combat segment of a given game turn, players may en must engage units in combat which are in the same light Zulu opposing units, as opposing units. Only those friendly units in the given light Zulu with opposing units may participate in combat, and only with those opposing units. The point is that voluntary units are compelled to engage in combat by the act of having ended their shift execution phase in the same light Zulu as opposing units. Exception, first combat segment. There is no limit to the number of units, supposing you're friendly, which may be in a single given light Zulu and therefore involved in a single combat action. First combat segment. To the first combat segment of each combat action, star forces that have just entered the light Zulu have a different strength than for the subsequent segments in the same combat action. In the first combat segment, star forces which have just entered the light Zulu may not attack or be attacked by opposing stargates or opposing star forces which are themselves, which have themselves just entered that light Zulu. They may also be attacked, and may only attack, enemy star forces which began the game turn in that light Zulu. Star forces which began the shift plot phase in that light Zulu have the option of refusing combat for the first combat segment. If the player does refuse combat, no combat is possible during the combat segment. Play then proceeds to the second and in any following combat segments. After the first combat segment, and in the second and further combat segment, a given combat action, all units are at full strength. Moreover, subsequently, all units in that contested light zoo must engage in combat, whether in attack or defense. Note that if both players allocate all their strength points to defense, this is still defined as combat, even though no resolution takes place. Combat strength, strength calculation. In all combat segments, stargates are worth five strength points. In all combat segments, star forces, which began the game turning given light Zulu, are worth three strength points. In the first combat segment only of a given combat action, star forces, which have just entered the light Zulu, are worth only two strength points. After the first combat segment in that combat action, the surviving star forces are worth three strength points. In the combat segments in which they perform a breakoff, star forces are worth only two strength points and may only use that strength defensively. Combat sequence. As stated before, there may 
be more than one combat action in a given game turn. There is one combat action for each different Light Sulu, a service play in which they're opposing units. For each combat action, there is at least one, the first combat segment, and there may be an indefinite number of combat segments following that. Note that there are differences between first combat segments and all subsequent combat segments. Combat continues with a sequence of plotting, attack, and defense strength points by each player and execution of the simultaneous attacks until the light Zulu is occupied by units of only one player or no players. Note that a given unit may only be in one contested light Zulu per game turn. Thus, if a Star Force wishes to break off and withdraw to a friendly Stargate or any other light Zulu, that Stargate or light Zulu must not be or have been occupied by enemy units in the game turn. In that game turn. Combat differential calculating and plotting for the combat segment. The simultaneous combat stations are expressed as a situations are expressed as a difference between the attacking strength points and defending strength points. For instance, if seven strength points have been allocated to attack by one player, given four strength points allocated to defense by another player, the combat differential calculation would be expressed as a three. The combat results table is on the shown on the board here. Except the reduction in strength points during the first combat segment and similar reduction during breakoff, his strengths are never affected during strategic combat by any means. His strength is always full. He is not unitary. The pool of strength points may be applied and divided in any manner. In order for a player to be considered an attacker during a particular combat segment, he must have allocated at least one strength point to the attack. Plotting the allocation of strength points. If players are using the normal technique of resolving each combat action from start to finish before going on to any others occurring in that game turn, they may simply write their combat allocations on scrap paper, stating attack strength, allocation first, and defense second. For example, if the player with a total of 8 strength points is supposed to wish to attack with only 2, he would write 2-6. If one or more of a player's Star Force is going to break off, so he would indicate which Star Forces are doing so, Remember when a Star Force breaks off, or it, off it is worth only two strength points for that segment, and those points may all be used defensively. If a player had two Star Forces in which to want to break off and want to attack with all its strength, he'd write down the following plot, 3, 2, MB, 20, 20, indicating the Star Force now breaks off, so 20, 20. I'll see if a custom player aid is needed for that. I'll develop one if there's needed for that. And I'll include it here. Combat breakoff. At the end of any combat segment, and from the second combat segment onward, either player may choose to withdraw some or all of the units. This is known as breaking off. Only star forces may break off in action. Stargates are immobile and may not, therefore, break off action. Units may preferentially break off to use to one of two locations, they may break off to the Light Zulu from which they entered the contested Light Zulu. If they overshifted into the combat action Light Zulu, they need not suffer overshift upon returning to Light Zulu from which they entered. Alternatively, they must draw to any uncontested friendly Stargate. The Stargate must be within t 10 lights of the point of breakoff. If neither of the above alternatives in 8.63 is available, the withdrawing star forces must draw to an adjacent and contested light Zulu of their own choice. Star forces, which are breaking off, do so immediately after combat execution in a given segment. Remember, star forces, which are breaking off, are worth only two strength points each, which may be used only be used defensively. Star forces may never break off into a light Zulu that's contested at any time during this, that game turn. Still may break off. In a given combat situation, if neither player suffers any losses after completion of the first six combat segments, then all the star forces being belonging to the player who does not have a star gate in the Light Zoo must break off and end the action. The same judgment must be made at the completion of each set of six combat segments, and the same compulsion to break off is applicable. If during that set of six combat segments, no losses were inflicted on either player. If the combat situation is one of those where instances that take place in a light Zulu, which 
chosen with Stargate, the player with the greater number of Star Forces, which did not begin the game turn in that Light Zulu, must break off. After six stalemated segments, if neither player has Star Forces, which began the game turn in that Light Zulu, then both players are forced to break off. Strategic combat results. Basically, only. So, strategic combat results table. The table is used to resolve combat during the combat execution segment. A dice is rolled. To when a player attacks in a given situation, he picks, you know, rolls a dice and reads the result. Cross anything that result with the appropriate attack defense. Differential. Will yield a combat result if both players are attacking in a given situation. Both roll dice before applying results. Differentials are calculated by subtracting the opposing player's strength points from the attacking player's attack strength points allocation. For example, if more strength points have been allocated to the defense, the opposing player has allocated to the attack, the attack will be made at a negative differential. Or maybe disallowed altogether if it falls below minus 3. Application results. The result numbers on the table are number of star forces, not strength points, eliminated by the attack. Star gates are equivalent to two star force units for combat purposes only. They may never be partially affected by one result, for example. Results are applied at the end of combat execution segment if both players have executed their attacks. The units involved must suffer the losses indicated for all possible. Of course, units may never suffer losses greater than their value. The losing player decides which of his units will be lost. The only case in which a player is forced to lose a Stargate is when the result against him is two or more and he does not have sufficient star forces present to make up the required loss. Stargate preservation. If a player loses, loses his Stargate in a combat situation, but also manages to destroy or drive off the enemy Star Forces in a game turn, the Stargate reappears on the immediately ensuing game turn. It may not, however, be used for shifting, position finding, or combat in the game turn, in which he reappears if the enemy player has forces remaining in the light zoo within the combat turn, game turn. The Stargate permanently disappears. If, however, the Stargate survives this game turn in limbo, returns to full strength and normal use at the very start of the next game turn. For example, a Stargate was destroyed in combat on the third game turn, appears in the fourth game turn, etc. So I talked about the basic game in detail, the strategic game, and then there's an advanced game, and I'll just talk that at a high level, but then I'll show an example in play to show more detail. So basically, when you get so that when you normally do combat and then the opposing forces are in a given light Zulu. Instead, you take the forces off the board and put them on the tactical display. So you put, if you have a Stargate, you put the Stargate at, you know, zero, zero, zero. If there's a, a star, you put that on the board. And the players, um, you know, write down in secret where they're going to show up on a tactical display in the Diminity Zulus, and then they put them on the board. And then attack turn is there's the first phase, which is tax shift and mode change segment, then combat cast segment, cast results application segment, plot modification segment, and then the second tech execution phase, tax shift and break off, combat cast segment, cast results application segment. Position re revelation phase, disruption recovery phase, situation judgment phase, and stalemate judgment. Then there's also several option rules. There's reserve star, for star forces you can bring in at another time. There's figure forces where you can break off sef separate forces from the main star force fleet. Gate link, which changes how you use star gates. Continuative situations, um, crew fatigue, and then there is a se sequential play. And this can be to support solitaire play. And then finally, a really neat aspect of this game is all the scenarios. So there's 
several kind of build up more more complex with different amounts of you know races and fleets and objectives it's like 14 and a couple of them are xenophobe scenarios which are the xenophobes they like to come in and they make stars supernova and pretty rough so it's kind of interesting then also nicely there's there's a solitaire game which is a a rescue mission so that's kind of nice that it comes with a solitaire game so the scenario I'll be doing is scenario five the Lachal da contact and we'll show set up and play so I'm going to be doing this scenario five 2451 AD La Chal da contact ever since first venturing out of the solar system Humans awaited first contact. Finally, in 2451, a small fleet of La Shalda from Sigma Draconis has stumbled across the nearest human colony, Eta Cassiopeia, defended only by its own Stargate. The attempt to probe and or capture with access to their own Stargate, it's 61 Cygni, by breakoff. Or as a battle deployment, human player has a Stargate and two stars, star forces of Sol. At 1821, Alpha Centauri has one Stargate and one star force. 3015, 3015, Tau Cetae, one Stargate, one star force. 2713, Epsilon Rod Erdani, one star fleet. One Star Force. 2009, A2 Erdani, just a Stargate. 2523, Epsilon Indy, Stargate, Star Force. 2018, Eta Cassiopeia, just a Stargate. 2427, Delta Pavonis, just a Stargate. And the La Shalda player, 2326, Sigma Draconis, Stargate, two star forces. 2626, 61 Cygni, just a Stargate. 3223, HR8832, Star Force and Stargate. And starting at 3018, two star forces. Victory conditions. Human player must permanently neutralize all enemy stargates. La Shalda player must permanently neutralize this whole stargate or any other two human stargates. Special rules. The game begins with tactical display deployment of two La Shalda star forces and deployment of the offending Eta PS stargate. Play proceeds on the excellent display before any stellar display plotting. Recommended format is definitely most enjoyable. It's a full advanced game with the full optional rules. So this scenario starts out with doing the tactical combat at Eta Cassiopeia where the alien units have come in seeing the human Stargate. And so I shifted that to the tactical display here. I'm assuming they're just shifting in this turn, since this is where it starts out. So the units coming in, the have to um, come in the, the 500 series hexes, kind of the perimeter. And since they're shifting in together, they have to be within one hex. And I'm having them come in at plus five mini light Zulu. Um, they can go from plus five to minus five, so they're coming in high there. And so that's where they're at. And I'm going to keep track on, of the tactical stuff on one of these sim move sheets, you know, separate from the um, strategic uh, stellar display plotting. So the uh, Stargate said 000. The star is right below that at a minus one. So that's the setup on the tactical display. So I'll show the 
the tactical display battle here. So first of all, all the pretty much all the information you need for the tactical efforts are, are right here, which is really handy. So where we're at right now is the alien's DNA of command and there's a human Stargate. So in the first when they first come in, the total distance, I brought them at plus five, so they're at five five away from the Stargate. And then we need the true distance, which if you look at five, five there's seven out. And um cast, which is the fight mechanism, the battle mechanism, can only go five. So they're on the they're outside that right now, so I have to move in a little bit. But so for they're in stellar mode right now. Um, they have a teleview value of 32, which is like, you know, action points. Um, so you, you do your plotting and then you do two execution phases. So first of all, they're going to ch change their mode to battle mode. And that requires, it requires 32 points. So they've shifted to battle mode. And now since they're in battle mode, you know, they have that total of... 64 so they'll they'll use 32 of their points to move They can move a total of of two In true points to distance which if you look at here that you know if you move one and uh, Two and Z for instance that would be a total of two or anything less than that so D is going to move up uh, one hex closer and then move down one Z. So they move down to uh, from plus five to plus four. And then E is going to move in one also. Um, and then they'll also drop one. So they both come in. And now the next phase, do the plotting. And as far as where they're at now, so D is at plus four and four, so four and four. He's still six out. And E is also, you know, six out. So they're still out of range, so they'll move in a little bit. And this turn now, so they're going to move, and then they're also they're going to, and so it's hidden, so two players will have each a sheet here, but for purposes here, I also put the Stargate on here since I'm playing this myself. So in the two phases, the aliens will move in, and then the next one they'll do a cast. So their plan is to... D will move in a little bit to be on the edge, and then E will move in more. So D will, will move up to, uh, or actually he'll stay at uh, 431, but he'll he'll drop he'll drop one more in Z. So he'll be at 431 uh, plus three. So that'd be four and three. So he's right at five. So he's in distance. E then, they're going to move in a little bit, so they'll move in here, and orientation is important, so I'll get their orientations here. And they're going to go down two, so that's, you know, one and two, uh, if the total distance would be two then, if you look at the chart. So they can do that. So they're... They're within four because they're at three, two. So they're at four. So they're a little bit closer in. And then the next one will be a cast, and they have 32 remaining. So they'll do a cast. And you can do cast in levels two, four, eight, 16, 32. They're going to do a 32. And they can also do an anti cast too, which is a defensive. Uh, but they're not going to do that. They're going to be offensive. So they'll do a cast of 32, and you have to say the direction. So it goes clock one, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. 
So they'll be casting it in 11, so going up this way. Simultaneously though, the Stargate, they're going to do uh, offensive and defensive, so they're going to, because they expect them coming in there, so they're going to do a, a 32 cast, and then they're going to do also a 32 anti-cast, because they get 64 each execution phase. And they'll do that in both phases. And their their direction will be five, so they'll be coming down here. Then you can look at these cones to see the effect. So first of all, the when they come in, when they settle in there, in the first execution phase, they come in the range of the Stargate, so the Stargate gets to fire, and then the second execution phase they can fire, and then the Stargate again fires. So they don't fire the first one. The Stargate, though, is at four and, I'm sorry, at 4 and 5. So you look here, he's casting 32. So at the 4, it's a 2. At the 5, it's a 1. And they don't do any anti-cast. If they do, you would subtract that value. So let's do the 5 first. The one that's at 5 distance away, which has a cast strength of 1. So you go to this column, roll dice. Four. No effect. So if he would have got a seven, they would have been disrupted and had their tell viewpoints reduced by half. Um, and now he'll do the one, and then it's one cast, but it captures both of these in there. So at the distance of four, which is E, he'll do a cast. Two. Yeah, no effect. So they were lucky there. Didn't take any damage that time. So now they come in, and so they have a an Eastern cast of 32, and they do the additive effect on the Stargate. So 32 at a distance of 5 is 1. 32 at a distance of 4 is 2. So they have a total 3 on here. But he's got an anti-cast of of 32 so whenever there's a negative value there's no effect so they do not damage him at all so now the the stargate is going to cast again then so again they're still at a distance of four and five and they're he's casting in the distance there direction there so first of all on the one is zero, no effect. The one that's four away, which would be the two column, and again, they don't have any anti-cast, is a nine. So that's not good news for him. So plus two means he's randomized, which basically means he's removed the tactical display. And then when we go at the completion of this tactical, he'll do stellar shifting, some randomized stellar shifting, and I'll show that. And then this this will continue until it's resolved that only one of the players is there. So after that tactical combat, moving back to the stellar display now. So the result was that the the two attacking alien forces were both randomized and the the Stargate was able to defend itself. So we'll put the we'll take off the tech, tech situation marker put the Stargate back where it goes and then we have to figure out so in the advanced game instead of just removing randomized units from the board you figure out where randomly they go in the board. So to do that First for D, we draw three three chits. So the first one, if you get either a destroyed or break off, that'll go in effect. So destroyed up here would mean obviously it's destroyed. Break off means it stays in its place, but it's not you know functioning. Um, so we don't get that. We get two. We get a zero and an eight, so we'll indicate that position. another five and 
minus 17. That's a z. And then for e, 26. Eleven plus two. So that's where they'll go. And they'll both be neutralized. So I'll put those on the board. There's denutralized. Denutralize. That's where they're at. And I finally want to mention that so I think the map works out really well. It so it represents a sphere, but you're basically looking down on the sphere. And the items that are blue are positive, meaning they're coming up. And the ones that are purple are below the plane, and it shows the levels. So I think that works out pretty well. Then we'll get into some more play in the stellar display. So a few turns into it after the initial tactical battle. So we'll show where we're at here. So the humans have been, uh, they'll be defending some of their worlds. Uh, Solar course. Fighting this, Stargate, this one, this one. A few are left undefended in these locations. And they'll be moving with their forces A and C to get to Sigma Draconis. So A and C both did gate shifts, which gives you, that's when you have a star force on a Stargate, and they did, so we got 10 from that. So they, they both had to change their altitude because they were at zero and minus four, and Sigma Draconis is at plus seven, so I did change that some. And then, obviously, at the transversity area, so. So they've been able to get here, and after a gate shift and a shift, so A is at 26, 27, plus seven, so a regular gate shift gets you, you can go five, so it's within his range. C, is here, so three out, and his altitude is twenty is a uh, plus five, so he's two off. So he that's within his range as well. So they'll be attacking that next. The others are defending the La Shalda. So they have a few defending theirs as well. They have uh, A has stayed where it is. B did a gate shift because he had to reduce his altitude from seventeen to seven. He's able to do that, and then he did a shift to get over there, so he's on location there to defend that. C is, uh, so it, just a little bit of an altitude change, just from 17 to 15, and it was, you know, like within 6 or so. Um, so within his 10, he was able to get there, and now he's just kind of waiting to maybe attack. So he's within striking distance, in the right altitude, or Z coordinate. D was quite a bit off the board. He was, you know, over here, because he was randomized. And so he's been shifting to get in, taking five at a time. This time he's going to do an overshift and try to, because he's at uh, minus 12. He wants to, because this location is at minus four. So he wants to get closer to being within range there and try to get down to minus seven and get a little bit closer in. E has been able to shift and now they're kind of in location here. And uh, you know they're they had to reduce their Z height a little bit, but now they're in strike they're right in striking range. So then we'll go ahead and move, see what happens. So of course a and C will move here. That's the human. Everything was in there five range, so they didn't have to do an overshift. So the La Shilda C. I mean, it's risky because you know they may be overmatched against the Stargate, but. Um, they're just going to see if they can maybe spread out the forces and maybe they'll withdraw, we'll see. And then E, they're then striking range, but they're not going to go yet because there's a, a star force there, not wanting to take that on. 
D, so they're going to do their overshift. They're going to attempt to go to 1720 and then reduce their height to minus 7. For that, we consult the overshift table. Which so D is going to do an overshift and their safe max is 5. They're going 9, so that gives them in category D. And, and now they'll roll the dice, see what happens. Seven. Category D, they're randomized, which isn't good. That'll, then we go th through the process to figure out, you know, where they will go that I showed previously. If they had gotten, um, a two or less, then they would have been safe if they would have got a four um, or three then they would have been reflected off in a mirror position so i showed tactical combat before now i'll show the strategic combat results so now we have a situation here by sigma draconis where we have two star forces entering and then in a defending hex there's a, a stargate and a star force so what you do is there's a strength points and then you have to allocate that to strength and defense and look at the difference. So that when the first the star forces first come in, the human forces, their star forces have a strength value of two each, so that gives them four. And the first time they come in, the Stargate can't attack them, but the existing force can. And the existing force that's there has a strength of three. So um, on this round, the humans have decided to go, so they have a total of four, they decided to go with the attack of three and defense of one, and the La Shildav went with the attack of two and defense of one. And then they both make a roll, so the humans will go. First of all, the differential then is, it'll be the three minus one for the humans, which is two, of course. Consult that plus two table. So the La Shilda lose one force. This will play after the combat. And then the La Shilda will go. And they have a attack of two minus the defense of one. So they're in the plus one table. They get a two. And that's insufficient. So. So on the next turn now, what's remaining is that one of the Lashadal forces has been eliminated. So there's two human forces against the Stargate. So on the turn after the initial one, the human forces are at a full of three strength each. So give them a total of six. And they've decided to allocate four for attack and two for defense. The Stargate has a strength of five and they've decided to allocate three for attack and two for defense. So first, for the human, it'd be four minus two, which would be the plus two, one. So nothing happens for them. The La Shilda have a three minus two, so on the plus one table, they get a four. So one of the human forces is eliminated. And now on the next turn, the, so the humans are at three, they'll go two, one, and the Lashild are at five, they'll go three, two again. So the humans, two minus two, so they're, they're in the zero column, six. So a one on a star is equivalent to two star forces, and a one, a partial effect doesn't have any effect, so they're fine. And now they'll go, so they're at, Three minus one, so at the plus two table. Seven, two. So they've eliminated the the human star forces. That's the conclusion of that battle. So that's Star Force Alpha Centauri from SPI in 1974. I have to admit, it's probably one of my my favorite games. Um, it's. Uh, it, I mean, there there are things you have to do, but they do give you these handy 
pads to keep track of everything and you can use them to do what you need and all the combat stuff's on the table so it's great it's uh pretty streamlined you have to think about how you're gonna you know approach the situations and I, i'm glad and it's got all these different scenarios that really give you a sense of the the science fiction you know universe it's created so I mean, it's a, a tactical game, but when it ties into the scenarios, it uh, it's very, very enjoyable. Um, and it doesn't have any you know, extra fluff to it at all, but components are very nice. Um, I think it looks really good, and it, it's very enjoyable for playing. And I rate them on how I appreciate them and enjoy them, so give it a high score. And then also it ties in with Outreach and Star Soldier. Outreach is, you know, basically a fleet of Star Force in the future that look to um, explore and expand across the galaxy. And I've reviewed that. I'd, if you want to check that out, and I will in the future be looking at Star Soldier, which I understand in that game it links with Star Force, and you can actually go to more detail in the tactical and actually have, you know, kind of man-to-man -man, uh, warfare. So I'm looking forward to trying that. But highly, highly recommended. And as of this date, I think you can still, you know, get them on eBay at a reasonable price, which is another plus. So I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Thanks for your time.